Oh, TD, Dexter, thank you so much. Uh, that's super, that's super amazing to be here to, you know, just join us as a men, uh, men uh, Christian, Christian Men International, uh, CMI. And um, I'm, I'm so glad to see all of us. So again, I'll start by saying good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you're joining from, depending on your time zone. It is 9 p.m. in Kenya, and the poster was written 8 p.m. I'm not sure where it is 8 p.m., maybe West Africa, and other people might be even at, at work, the poor at the gym. So this is super good to just connect and, um, uh, the world actually is a global village and uh, post-COVID has uh, taught us a lot that we could still meet, we could still connect, we could still have intentional conversations um, and just grow and glow even as we continue with this, as we do this thing called life. So my name is Nguka, Nguka Ojuang. Again, as you've heard, I'm a pharmaceutical practitioner, life coach and a counseling psychologist and I currently live in Kenya. For the longest time period, I've been in Kenya and been living in Kenya, born in Kenya, raised in Kenya, live in Kenya, work in Kenya, and serve in Kenya. So yeah, I'm Kenyan, and I'm glad to meet all of you. Um, even before we just dive in, I'd love to hear all of our voices. So there's this cool thing. Well, I think it's cool, or I call it cool, that I normally do before I start my um, before I start my trainings, my discussions, my webinars. ETC, I'd like to invite all of us to unmute and say hi to anybody that you can see on your screen, on your left, on your right, above you, below you. So in the count of three, two, one, everybody unmute and say hi to somebody. Hi, hi T. Hi, Nguka, uh, hello, hello, Mr. Amolo. Uh, hello, Tony. Hello, Amolo. Israel. Hello, Otugile. Hi, Taolo. And everyone else who's connecting, hello to you. So, thank you for that. Uh, we called uh, mute back and get into it. So, um, uh, I guess Tony is the host. And if Tony would allow me, I'd like to maybe share a screen, if that's okay. Tony, are we together? Yes, sir, you can, uh, you can actually share your screen. I was just fixing the settings. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, again, in this new era, there are things that you need to say, because again, it's like, um, you know, teething, teething problems of technology, where we, we really have to ask again and again, are you able to hear me? So if you're able to hear me, you can give me a thumbs up and you can mute yourselves if you can you can able to hear me then if you're also able to view my screen if you're able to see some color in your screen written video focus you can also give me a thumbs up so um i'm waiting to see that for people who good 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 katelo can see opo can uh, levy can see 
If you're able to see my screen, give me a thumbs up kindly. Let's interact. Lepaku, thank you. Uh, so that, that means we're good. That means we're good. You're able to you're able to, to see me, you're able to see my screen. That's fair enough. That's good enough. Um, it will be more of a conversation. I speak a lot, so I'll need to know uh, how much time I have. And um, I'll need us to really interact, make this very interactive, interact on the chat section. Um, you can use, if there's a point that resonates with you, if you feel there's a question you need to raise, you can type that in the chat, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chat box. And you can also raise your hand where need be. And you can also uh, use the emojis or the reaction buttons. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, Steve Ototi. Steve, you have a question? Maybe? You raise your hand. Or you're giving me a thumbs up. Well, awesome, 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 awesome. So yeah. So um, our topic for today is feed your focus. And for me, focus is a great topic because it is, um, it has a lot to do with how we turn out. It has a lot to do with our successes. It has a lot, a, a lot to do with creating the life that you want. It has a lot to do with our individual journeys. Steve, are you unmuted? There's somebody who raised their hand. Someone has raised their hand before I can go on. Okay. I'll assume that's not. Uh, I think you can just continue. Well, I'll, 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 I'll tackle those in a bit. Please check your volume. Uh, or Tony, can you unmute him? Ah, awesome, awesome. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, as I was saying, uh, feed your focus, a very critical topic for, for me, a very critical topic for me. And um, I think it has a lot to do with our successes. It has a lot to do with the life that we want. It has a lot to do with vision casting, it has a lot to do with the life that we're creating for ourselves and the life that we want to be in, to live, and you know, even to just make the world a better place. Yeah. So um, this is uh, a little about me. So yeah, um, as uh, Dexter mentioned uh, earlier, my name is Nguka Nguko Jung, that is my profile. And um, if I were, um, if I were a pastor, or if I were, you know, a bishop, I say I would have started by saying, uh, "My name is Nguko Juang. Uh, by the grace of God, I'm called to serve in this ministry, CMI, and I happen to be married to one wife. And also, for, um, you know, just remember to mention that she's, uh, it's one wife who's a female. Then I'm blessed. I'm blessed with, you know, X number of kids, yada yada. But since I'm not a pastor, and uh, I'm presenting from a house where my wife is. So it's really important for me to say I'm married. <laughs> and yeah, I'm a father. So thank you guys for posting me and we're looking to interact uh, more. Now, feed your focus. What comes to your mind when you hear of, you know, feeding a focus? To me, it means that there is something that is being stabbed yeah and there's this beautiful quote by tony robbins who's a great coach and one of my great you know mentors that i follow in terms of um really i follow personally but through his books through his podcast tony robbins says that where focus goes energy flows and results show so where focus goes gentlemen energy flows and results show. So if you want to know where your focus is, then I'll suggest to you tonight, 
that or today, depending on your time zone, that you should look at your life. You should look at the results of your life and that will tell you where your focus is. So again, where focus goes, energy flows, and we'll be building on that step by step today. But before into it, I'm a storyteller and I love using stories when you know having conversations when teaching. And a story is told of you know an old fisherman who had two dogs. And the old fisherman used to take uh, you know those dogs uh, for a battle every Saturday. He had a black dog and a white dog, and he used to take them for a battle every Saturday. And uh, during the battle, or be, be before the battle began, he could put a bet. He could bet on which dog would win. And surely at the end of the battle, the dog that he had watched for, the dog that he had bet, the dog that which he had said or had voted for would win, um, actually did win. Um, so people will come and people would also bet to see which dog would win. And the fisherman could bet and say, you know what, these are my dogs, but I'm telling you, this white dog is gonna win the battle today. And the day that he said the white dog will win, surely the white dog won the battle. The day on which he bet on the black dog, surely the black dog did win the battle. But at the end of the day, whichever dog lost, the farmer or the fisherman, the old fisherman, did win because he always had a way of knowing which dog would win the battle. So one day, um, a friend of his came and asked, you know, old man, you always have a way of knowing which dog will win the battle. So how do you do this? And the old man chuckled and replied that, um, you see, a week before the battle, the dog that I would want to win, I usually feed it. And I do starve the dog that will lose the battle. So if I want to bet on the black dog winning a week before the battle, I feed the black dog with the best of foods, with the best of nutrients, but I starve the other dog. So in the battlefield, the dog that has been fed will automatically win. That's how I know the dog which will win. I think that was so brilliant of him because he had his own way of knowing and he did that by feeding the dog that he wanted to bet for and that's his way that's the only way he knew and that's the way he won at the end of the day the bet why am i saying this i'm saying this because we all have these two dogs in our lives we have the black dog we have the white dog and whichever dog we want to win hands by choosing on what to feed and this dog today if you if i may i will call them focus and distraction so if you want the dog called focus to win then you need to feed your focus for it to win if you starve your focus it's not gonna win if you starve your distraction your focus will win if you feed your focus your focus will win and your distraction will be starved and will lose. So what have you been feeding? Again, as I said earlier, in, 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 in what we are seeing on our screen, attention goes where uh, energy goes, energy flows where attention goes or where focus goes. So where focus goes, energy flows. So, and results show that. So I want, us, I want you to pause and look at your life. If you can probably uh, type in the, chat box and you know in terms of evaluating your life or you can just do that silently i want you to look at the result of your life i want you to look at where you present it where you have um you've nailed it where you have asked it where you are flourishing then uh you know look at the kind of energy you give to that place of your life and look also at the kind of focus that you've put in that place and for sure you will tell me, and for sure you'll be able to tell, you know, uh, or you'll be able to attest that where focus goes, energy flows and result shows. Now, examine your life and look at the results that you have. How are those results? Do they speak of you feeding your focus or they speak of you feeding the distractions? 
do they speak of you disturb um starving your distractions or do they speak much of you you know feeding your focus now focus um tracks it's um again this as uh, some of my slides are really uh there to make this slides look cool maybe they really don't have any reason to be there but I uh, since they are my slides, I will just be sharing. Let's look at them and have fun while looking at them. So these are this, um, just a definition of what focus is. It is really important for us to come to the context that focus, again, this is too much information, which really has nothing to do with this presentation, but to just make uh, me look a little bit educated and, uh, you know, cool. So focus tracks back its uh, definition. We go from uh, the field of optics well um in science again i love science so I, I i'll be referring to science a little bit more often uh but just get what you need to get from 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 this discussion so focus is maximum clarity and we look at it later when you're looking at the vision part of these slides or from the vision part of this webinar this presentation or this conversation that clarity has a lot to do with how our visions turn out clarity has a lot to do with great vision now Focus means it is there's maximum clarity and there is attention. Okay. So we can also replace the phrase that where focus, you know, goes, energy flows to where attention goes, energy flows. Because focus is akin or is the same as attention, right? Now we want to look at the correlations uh, and from these correlations, we can, you know, create our life out of it. There are correlations of focus, and these are the four correlations. We have energy, we have we have faith, and we have ourselves or the human being or the you. And that's not with the energy. Um, and the energy is can be described as the quantitative property that must be transferred to a body. Uh, to perform work on the body, or it is the capacity to do work. I think from our physics class, if um, I told you, you you did physics in your high school or in your primary school, you, you will understand that we used to describe energy as the capacity or the ability to do work. And when we say that where focus is or where focus goes, energy flows. When you talk about feeding your focus, it means that we want to focus on that thing. We want to give all full attention to that thing that we are focusing on. It could be our business, it could be our marriages, it could be our relationships, it could be our work, it could be our individual journeys. Yeah. So while energy is able to do work, it means that what you focus in, the result will show in terms of if energy is able to do work, then the work will be done and we'll see the result. But now we need to dig a little more deep and look at what is this work that we are talking about. And the dictionary describes work as an activity that involves mental and physical effort done in order to achieve a result. Again, I pose a question to you, what is your result? What are the results that you can see in your life? You, when you show me your result, I'll tell you what you have been focusing on in your life. So if you don't get with, if you don't get out of this webinar, out of this training, out of this uh, conversation, anything, remember where uh, focus goes, where attention goes, energy flows and results show. So when you want to see what you've been focusing on, look at the result of your life. Look at the place you are in. And that is where your focus lies. In physics, again, back to physics, um, work is a product of force applied to displace an object at a distance of displacement. So it describes work as a function of both force and distance. Yes. So uh, again, in our physics class, class or in our science class, if anybody remembers that, and I'm sorry to take you back there, uh, because I also don't understand why this is important or why where we are going with this, but I want us to look at the practicability of it. So work is equal to first time distance. While 
your life could be stagnated. It means there's no work because it means you are not growing. It means you are not moving. It means that you are perambulating, you are revolving in the same space. So this is why I want us to look at the work being as a being a function or a result or a product of you know force and distance because i want us to direct the energy to to have you know to budget our energies in a way that we can direct it in the right way to get the right work done so you are there you feel stagnated you have been going around in circles. When you look at your life where you were last year as a man, you feel you are in the same place. You feel you're stagnated in the same place. This means that there is no work done because there is no distance being moved. You are stagnated in the same place. But when work is there, you can be, in short, you can be putting the, a lot of energy in the wrong place and achieving no results, achieving stagnation. And stagnation, uh, you know, results to many things like you know distractions like depression and many other things that affect our mental health as men the next uh, correlation of focus that i want us to look at is faith and uh faith as you can see again on 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 your screen i want one of us to read for us the definition of faith from um, from the, as people of faith, let us use the Bible to find the definition of faith. So anybody who can get um, Hebrews 11.1 1, can read it to us before I can go on. So if you can find that and you're able to read, um, you could probably raise your hand and, you know, just do that. Sorry. Is there anyone who raised their hand? No, there's nobody. Is there anyone Maybe who raised their hand? Us. Maybe Abel can read for us. Read, Mr. Chalau has posted it in the chat box. Hebrews. That is Hebrews 11, uh, chapter 1. I mean, chapter 11, verse 1. I read thus, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Thank you, thank you. Faith is... Uh, come up again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes, yes, thank you. And it's the same thing um, that 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 you have also posted in the in the chat box. So anyone who did get that can look at the chat box. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Um, someday I was watching. Um, even early today, I was watching uh, Steve Harvey. And uh, it was so profound for me what he said about this uh, and about how his life has been a product of faith and a product of God's doing. And um, he brings out, you know, what I want us to get from this context, from that verse, that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Meaning these things may not be reality, but these things are imagined, okay? We are imagining it. So these are things, it's a substance of things hoped for, then the evidence of things not seen. When we cannot see them, it's not in reality, it is not in our vision, but we still hope for these things. And, uh, and gentlemen, uh, if I may, I want to invite us to, to think of it in this way, that, you know, what Albert Einstein says, and what you can see on your screen is that imagination, is everything. It is the preview to life's coming attraction. Imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's coming attraction. This quote tries to sum up what the Bible says about faith. Faith 
being substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. In short, it says that there is a lot of greatness in our imagination, that a lot of our goals, a lot of our visions, a lot of our dreams starts from the point of imagination, starts from the point of faith, you know, a substance of things that you hope for. I hope to see myself X, 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 X in a X number of years, okay? I hope to see my bank growing in this figure in this, you know, um, this number of years. While we cannot see, we believe. While we cannot see, we hope for it. So, gentlemen, I'd like to suggest to us today that everything in our lives emanates or starts from the point of imagination, then we believe in it. And after believing in it, we channel our focus to that particular thing, then the energy flows there and it manifests in terms of our results. So faith has a lot to do on how we turn out. Faith has a lot to do on you know, how we create our lives, we create our vision, we create the life that we want. So I invite you to this mantra of you are not merely a, you know, a, 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 a human being, but you are a spiritual being having you know, human experiences and you need to connect with the spiritual being, a supernatural being higher than you, that is God through faith so that you can be able to achieve these things that are not yet seen. But this is through your focus. Where is your focus? And what are the results that you want to see? So faith it till we make it. I invite us to this mantra of faith it until we make it. Because your greatness is in your imagination. What are you imagining in terms of what are you, are you having faith in today? Where is your faith today? What in your faith, where are you seeing yourself in the next three years, in the next one week? Because by imagining that, the great dream starts from that point. And the shortest way the surest way to see if, the surest way to kill a big goal, the surest way to kill a big dream is by choosing the people you share it with. While your greatness lies in your imagination, while your greatness, your dreams lies in your imagination, the surest way to kill that imagination, the surest way to kill that dream, the surest way to make it not come into to, to be a reality is by sharing it with small-minded people people. So while you may have faith, while you may work at it, while you may, you know, channel the right energy to it, while you might decide to focus, if you do not guard that focus and guard the people around you and guard the people and save the people who are around you and only interact with great men, with men who have the vision, like the one that you have, then you will kill that vision before it even starts. You will kill that uh, dream. You will kill those goals. Why? Because small-minded people will give you a hundred ways on how that idea will not work. Small-minded people, when you share with them that great idea, when you share with them that great faith, when you share with them that great imagination, will tell you of a hundred possible ways of how that business will fall, how that idea is, you know, the most stupid idea that I've ever heard of, how that idea is not gonna work, how that marriage is not gonna work, how that relationship is not gonna work. They are always negative. The first way of how to identify small-minded people and save them and block them from your circle by guarding your focus is by looking at people who are shallow focused. Look at looking at people who are always negative. They don't want to find a hundred possible ways. They don't want you to, to help you to refine that idea and make it work or make it better, but they're looking you know, to discourage you because they love you people becoming, you know, being on the same level. And that's where they, they'll find always, you know, to tell you that this will not work. I need to plug in my, uh, my, my power, just a minute, guys. Let me hold it there as I plug this in. Ah, thank you, we are back. So I was saying, if 
you want to kill your dream, if you want to kill your vision, share it with the small minded people. But if you want it to flourish, then guard your focus, guard your circle, guard people who surround you and share your great visions, share your great dreams, share your great aspirations with you know, people whom in my view, I call uh, great minded individuals. The last component um, relation of focus that I want us to look at is the most powerful one and it is you, it is me, it is us. And I invite you to the idea or to the, my personal mantra that I have that we are not merely human beings having spiritual uh, human beings having spiritual experiences but we are spiritual beings having human experiences once you get to know that that can change your life gentlemen because you get to understand that you are a spirit you are energy and you are not merely having experiences happening to you but you are a creator of your experiences. You are a creator of your life. You're not merely, you know, just there having things happen to your life, but actually you play an important role, an active role in creating the life that you want. I don't know if you're getting me. You are energy and you are a spiritual being and you are a creator. When you come to that realization that you are a creator, then your goals, your vision, your aspirations, and your focus will go to the right place because we are creators. And I want to invite you to that thought. And I want you to lean in and think about it and want you to reflect on it. What have I been creating? What are the results that I see in my life? What and how, you know, how am I responsible for this? How have I been creating this? Because you take the full responsibility of what you see in your life because you are the creator of it. And either way, if you believe you can make it, and if you believe you cannot, either way you are right, yeah? The quote that I've written below, whether you believe you can or you can't, whether you believe you are best or you're not, whether you believe you are a conqueror or you are not, either way you choose to believe you are right. Because what you choose to believe is what you focus on and it's what you create. 10. No, awesome. I'm just saying, what you're saying there is very low debt. Sorry? I was just saying what you said there was just is so loaded. Uh, I just wish people could relate to it more. And uh, yeah, if they need to chip in and say something. Thank you, thank you. Anybody who can maybe chip in and say something, you can raise your hand. And um, uh, I think Tony or Dexter, anyone who is able to track that, who is able to see that, you know, can unmute you and we can, you know, we, you can unmute yourself rather and you can have this as a conversation. So anybody who has anything before I can go on, I can pause a little bit there. And if there's something that, you know, you feel resonates with you, you feel you need to contribute a little bit more to it, maybe you can voice that out. Yeah, because I, I loved when you said we are spiritual beings having a human experience. You know, and if that we can just get that, we'll begin to create magic. You know, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll begin to see how in charge you are, how in control mm -hmm. you are. Thank you, thank you so much, Dexter, for that. And um, as even we pause, I just like to you know um, again just tell us another story um, of what I'm saying that whatever you believe in, if you believe you can't, you are right. If you believe you can, you are right as well because you are not merely having experiences, but you are the creator of your experiences. So a story is told of you know a wise old man again, who you know used to be a fortune teller, and people used to go to him for advice. And there's a 
and he used to have good advice and he could tell of what would happen. He could tell of fortunes. He had this gift of prophecy. So a young man, a young cheeky man wanted to play a prank on him. And so he decided, you know, I want to show the world that this man is not really intelligent. This old man is not really wise. This old man is not too at profit. So he took a bird, the young boy took a bird in his hand and oh, folded the hand and went to the old man and asked, old man, you have been saying that you are a prophet. You have been saying you are a fortune teller and you have been crowned as a wise man in our village. But I want you to tell me, I hold a bird in this hand and you know, I want you to tell me if the bird is alive or the bird is dead. So the old man knowing of his trick paused for a while, thought, and everybody was look, waiting for the old man to fail. And the and, 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 and the young man was really happy that he'd you know, made the old man think. Then after thinking, the old man opened his mouth to speak and he said, son, the destiny of that bird lies in your hand. If I say, if I say sorry, it is alive, you'll squeeze it, crush it, and it will die. If I say it is dead, you'll open your arms, release it, and it will fly. So whatever happens to that bird, whether alive or dead, the destiny of the bird lies in your hand. And the boy was startled and said, that is so brilliant, old man. You are indeed wise. And why am I sharing this? I'm sharing this to just reiterate and to just cement the point that I'm talking about that you are a creator and your destiny lies in your hand. Your destiny lies in your focus. The destiny lies in your spirituality in what you choose to create of your life. You can either squeeze it, kill that destiny, or you can choose to release, open the hand and let it fly away, touch lives and make the world a beautiful place. Because as a creator, God is inviting us to this beautiful story of, you know, joining him in the creation story and making the world a beautiful place by adding value to the lives of people who cross our paths. So what are you going to do? Are you going to create the world and make it a better place? Are you going to create your life and make it the way God wants it to be? Or are you going to sit still keep praying and wait for life to happen to you. What are you gonna do? So the next thing, um, this is just a beautiful picture that I found online and it has nothing to do with our presentation today. Um, I just thought, wow, quantum physics is something super amazing. Just to look at a little bit about, about it, about energy and about um, how energy works. So I thought this, picture was beautiful and it has nothing to do with our presentation. It is just for me to look cool again. <laughs> so yeah, this is what I want us to focus on in terms of quantum physics. Again, quantum physics is um, a great topic. If, 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 if by any chance you love uh, science, it is an area that you can look at. Uh, there's a lot to learn in, 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 in quantum physics. But um, another man that I look at his post, I follow him so much. His name is uh, Joe, Dr. D Dr. Joe Dispanza. And he's, he has this beautiful quote that you can, you can see on, you can see on your screen. Yeah, on the computer on your screen. Um, and it says, uh, huh, this here. Yeah, it says that at the subatomic level, energy responds to your mindful attention and become matter. At the subatomic level, energy responds to your mindful attention and becomes matter. In short, at subatomic level, energy responds to your focus, what you focus on, and becomes matter. Now, this will be a little bit complicated, but I, I'll try to break it down. Uh, in quantum physics, there's a discovery that came to be made that an atom actually does not survive or does not exist in a state or does not exist at all 
until the observer, the person who is observing it under a microscope or whichever means the machine that is using to observe it, actually focuses the light on it, it's when there will be a chance at that particular time for that atom to exist. This point I'm just trying to create is to show us on how spiritual we are, on how we are energy and on how we can create our lives by getting to understand that you're energy and you are creator of your life. When you understand that you're energy, you also understand that energy vibrates in a certain frequency. And that frequency can travel because when you emit that energy by focusing on something, that energy travels and you get to attract people who are like you, people who are focused like you. That's how the same energy was transmitted from the founder of CMI, who was able to meet other people who think like him or her. Oh, of course, it's him because it's a man, manly thing. Okay, okay, him or her. And then it brought us together. This energy, this vibration brought us together. We found a way to come together and find ourselves in this, you know, WhatsApp group, in this webinar, so that we can be able to go together. That's how energy and vibrations work. That's what you'll find when, you, when you're in business and you're doing a certain kind of business and you find people are running away from you and buying from another person more. It is because of the energy you emit. And energy, whether it's positive or negative, when you miss the negative energy, yeah, then the brain, again, the science bit of the brain, the way the brain is, 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 is created, the way the brain is formed, the way the brain functions, it functions with energy waves. And when the brain feels the kind of a negative energy produces the fight or flight hormone, which is the adrenaline. And that's when you decide, yo, let me take off because I can't interact with this kind of person because the kind of energy they emit does not attract me towards them. The kind of energy they emit you know, repulse me. The kind of energy they emit does not make me grow. That's how you even create friends because of the energy and the vibrations we make. Well, I hope that's not, you know, too much to chew, but let's go on. Now, according to what Dr. Joe Dispanza says, at the subatomic level, energy responds to your mindful attention and becomes matter. Anything that has mass and occupies space. So we are creators in a way. So. According to quantum experiments, electrons exist simultaneously in an infinite array of possibilities or probabilities in an invisible field of energy. Just get it as, as is like that. In short, in quantum physics, electrons exist with an energy, but in a real state. Now, a particle cannot manifest in reality. It is only a particle in imagination. It is only a particle of an electron in imagination. When you look at an atom, the way it's created with you know, negative and positive electrons, and you, you, you can't really see them, but they exist in an energy. That's why they can attract and repulse in a way. But until the observer, the person who is observing it, looks at it or focuses the light array at it or focuses the microscope on it, then, what Dr. Joe says, or what quantum physics says, is that that particle does not exist. So the observer is the creator of that episode of existence at that particular moment. And he says, with this discovery, the point number three, we are in point number three. With this discovery, mind and matter can no longer be considered separate. Why? Because they are intrinsically related because the subjective mind, that is the mind of the observer, produces measurable changes on the object and the physical world. Ladies and gentlemen, when you understand, sorry, gentlemen, when you understand and lady, I've seen one lady, lady and gentlemen, when you understand that you are a spiritual being, when you understand that you are energy, then you understand that you are able to create possibilities. You are able to create your world. You are able to create the physical world and make changes on objects, on yourself, on your goals, on your passion, on anything that you want, because you have 
the observer's effect. And what if you decide to focus on your life? What if you decide to focus on your goals? What if you decide to you know, have this total focus? How would your life change if you learned to direct the observer effect or the, the collapse of the wave function as, as, as quantum physics calls it. When you, when you decide to you know, direct that observer effect and to collapse infinite waves of probability into the reality that you choose, will you be able to look at your life in a great spectrum? Will you be able to look in your life, the life that you've created for yourself and the life that you can create for yourself and the life that you want in a more better way? Because at the subatomic level, energy responds to your mindful attention. So with attention, ladies and gentlemen, I like to, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to uh, suggest to you that with attention, with focus, you can create the life you want. And it all starts here. It all starts in the point that you understand. It all starts at the point that you understand that there is what we call Imagine it, innovate it, and create it. You, every goal, as I said earlier, every vision starts from the point of imagination, starts from this point, this first point of imagination. You imagine it, then you believe in it, then you focus and energy will flow and that which you want will be created, the life that you want will be created. So start by imagining it today, then focus on that journey. What is your journey? We all have separate journeys. And the durable journey, you have to look back, backward. You know, you have to look back, you have to look front, you have to own your story, then you know, get to know where you're coming from and where you're going. Focus on that journey. And if you by any chance you forget everything we've learned so far, I want you to remember on uh, the third point, which is budget your energy flow. Budget your energy flow. We stagnate a lot, gentlemen. We stagnate a lot, good people, because we are not focusing our energy. We don't have energy budgets. Just like our finances, there's one cool thing I came to learn from a class I once attended that there's something called energy budgeting. And when you do your energy budgeting, you'll know that it is okay to say no. You will know that it's okay to say no, and it's perfectly okay to say no. At times you have to say no to people because you can't give your best energy to everyone. And as men, we get, we tend to, you know, to, to, to try to be people pleasers. We tend to try to give our best energy to everyone. Way to live your life. You have to prioritize where you channel your energy by prioritizing your focus. For example, I'll give an example of where I am uh, where I have failed as, as, as a man. We are busy, or I am busy in, um, in a busy world, doing all these things, counseling, you know, coaching, um, working in actively, uh, work, working in, an hospital, in a medical facility, you know, in the expense of losing out on family time. So in terms of my energy budgeting, I tend to give my family the list of energy because most of the time I spend working so that I can create for them. So when I look at my, 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 my energy budget and if I've calculated that 30%, I'm giving it to my, my employer, 30%, I'm giving it to my business, 30%, I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to, 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 to my community friends, you know, where I'm adding uh, value to, or the organization that I, I happen to be the founder of, just encouraging these youth and doing all this. Then I remain the 10%, this is what I choose. This is what the energy that remains that I'm giving to my family. But you realize there's no point in that calculation that there's energy for yourself. So when you learn to say no to some things, when you learn to do your energy budgeting, then you will get even time to re-energize. 
because every day you come fully charged like a phone with 100% energy. And the more apps that are given priority in your phone, the more they consume energy from your phone and the faster your phone dies. So the surest way of you feeling drained, the surest way of you um, feeling tired, you know, with that job, with that craft, with life in itself, feeling depressed, is by not choosing to intentionally budget your energy, is by choosing to give everyone the best of your energies, people who matter, people who don't matter to your journey, people who are not really consequential on the life you're creating for yourself. Choose to save them. Choose to say no, because it is okay to say no. So you really need to look at the budget flow, which is really important to creating the life that you want. Then you need to track your results and we look at that in terms of um, targeted evaluation or uh, evaluation in terms of our different journeys. Vision. Vision is, you know, the step to creating that life that you want. After understanding that it all starts in imagining, it all starts in innovating, it all starts in, uh, then we can create what we want. You start to, you have to start by imagining, then believe. Then now we have to look at that thing called vision. And I want us to just pause there a little bit and maybe type in our chat box, what is your understanding of vision? When you hear the word vision, what comes in your mind? What is vision for you? And even as you type in the chat box, in the interest of time, um, Dexter or Tony will help me sample some of those comments and we'll be able to read them at the end of the hour. But I want us to dig deep, a little bit deep towards vision. What is your vision? Even as we come in that journey of feeding our focus, how have you been focused on your vision? And I want us to pose this question to us. Are you committed to that vision? Are you committed to that vision or are you simply interested in it? The moment you answer that question and the moment you decide if you are committed or you are interested in your vision, that would be you know, the point that will set you apart. I've had these discussions with some of my mentees, with some of my clients, and when they come to understand the difference between staying committed, being committed to your vision, and you know, knowing the difference from and, and getting to know the difference of being interested in it, that is the beginning point of setting you apart. That is the starting point of setting you apart. So are you committed to your vision or are you just interested in it? The difference is that when you're committed to something, then you are truly focused. You give all your attention, you give all your best energies to that particular thing. But when you're just interested in it, you are interested in seeing that come to pass. You are interested that you're just waiting for the result, but not the process. But you understand that in creation of vision, the process is way important and the results because success is just not um, an event. It's not merely an event, but it is our daily habits. It's our daily action. It is our daily focus. What we focus on the actions that we put towards it and you know the discipline that we put in place to hold us accountable to the end of it. What we see at the end is not, but success is all daily habits that we put in place. And this is um, something that I've learned from John Maxwell, who is a great author and a great leadership trainer. He said that success is not you know, an event, but it is the daily habits that you put in place. So what is your vision? Thank you for those people who are typing and be able to view those um, at the end of the hour and just you know, have a discussion around it. So if you see something that someone has posted and it resonates with you, give them a thumbs up. You know, Keep interacting in the chat box even as you go on. Now, there are three components of a great vision. The first component is called the foresight. The second component is called the insight. And the third component is called the hindsight. So foresight, as you can see on your screen, insight and hindsight. I want you to evaluate your vision. Does your vision does that great vision that you hold have insight? Does it have foresight and hindsight, sorry? 
I want to, 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 to equate uh, foresight for the purpose of learning and understanding to a telescope or a binoculars. A telescope if you, is, is an object used to view maybe far objects uh, like or far bodies in the sky or in the ship, they use a telescope. So a great vision is like a telescope. It is not a vision that only looks at what will happen today. It is not a vision that looks at what are we eating today, but it looks, it transcends you. It goes even after you are gone, even after you are dead, that vision still lives on. And, and, and this affects us as men in many ways. If you don't have a great vision, it's, it's, it's the question that our relationships begs to ask of us. It is the question that our society begs to ask of us. Because love it or not, you are given the God-given responsibility of being a leader, being a leader in the society, being a leader in your countries, being a leader in, in, in church, being a little family. You are the head, you are the leader of this family. So when the person that you are in a relationship with, the person that you're married to, you know, asks you of how secure they are, because they normally care more of their security than all these other things that you want to give them. A woman will be always so keen of their security. And what they're asking is the foresight. When you are gone, when you are dead, will I still be secure? Will I still, will I still be able to feed? Will I still be able to dress? Will, will our children you know, have the best life even when you're gone? They are looking at the security. And your great vision is to have foresight. It needs to, to be focused on what is ahead. It needs to be, it needs, you need to create a vision which transcends you, a vision that goes way beyond you. That's why we equate it to foresight. It needs to be far. You don't have to have, you, it's not, it is not good enough to have, you know, uh, a vision that is only short term. It needs to have the mid term. It needs to have the long term. It needs to have life even after you're gone that someone else will look at it and continue with that vision. It's not a vision that dies with you. And that's what the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter two, verse two, that you need to write it on the wall. You need to make it clear. And that's why I'm going to clarity, insight. Make it clear so that anybody who sees it will run with it, Habakkuk two and two. That tells us that a great vision has something called the insight. And then in it to, um, uh, to a microscope, as you can see on your screen. And a microscope is used in the lab, in hospital setups, in lab setups, to view specimen under it. Maybe when uh, you give stool and um, the doctor cannot tell, or, or, or the, the lab technician, or the lab uh, technologist, or the lab you know, uh, personnel cannot tell what, you know, is what you're sick, what, 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 what is making you ill. But when they look at the stool, when they look at the specimen on the slide under the microscope, then they can able to look at the minute structures. They can be able to look at the smallest of structures of, 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 of the bacteria, of the virus, of, 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 of the whichever form of uh, the disease causing microorganism, they're able to see it under the microscope. And this is how our vision should also be. Your vision needs to be clear on the small details, clear on how the how to achieve it, clear on the very little small details. It needs to cross the T's and dot the I's, ladies and gentlemen. And the last component about the, your vision that needs to have a master of your vision is the hindsight. And we equate it to a rear view mirror or a side mirror of a vehicle. And if, if you can, you know, you can picture a vehicle, you'll realize that, you know, the, the, the dashboard or the front, you know, mirror or, 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 or screen or the windscreen, the windscreen, sorry, is usually way bigger than the, 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 the rear mirror. Because we need, as much as we need to see where we are going, we also need to see where we are coming from. And the function of a hindsight in your vision is to preventing you from making avoidable mistakes. 
or to reduce or keep you in check so that you can reduce the probability of making avoidable mistakes. And we need this in a vision. Mm -hmm. The vision needs to look, to join the dots looking behind because you cannot join dots only looking in front. You need to own your story. You need to find out where am I coming from? Who am I? How am I, you know, uh, how, how am I engineered? What is my structure like? What is my background like? Then now, uh, subject to that, form that vision, create that vision, create that life you want as you look in front. But you have first to join the dots behind so that you can sort out your childhood traumas. You can sort out everything that happened. You can make peace with yourself. You can forgive yourself. You can forgive people who wronged you. And you go forward, forge forward with a clear mindset. As a creator of your vision, as a creator of your life, as a creator of the life that you want to be, your vision needs to have these three components, ladies and gentlemen. The foresight, the insight, and the hindsight. The next thing that I, I want to speak to us is about after you create that vision, after having this vision with these three components, then to create that life you want, you need to build good habits. And I'm saying this because we have something called, and something I like to talk about, language shift. I am. I, I tend to be biased against using this language, break bad habits. And when I'm in therapy with a lot of my clients, I normally tell them we are changing. We need to come to that point of mindset shift, body shift, and language shift. The language shift here, I want us to be positive in terms of our language. Because to create the life we want, we need to be positive. Because we and all of you will agree with me that we are in an, an, uh, an era of a lot of information. And, you know, there are great books which are written of, you know, you will find a book written of, you know, 100 ways to break bad habits, 10 ways to build good habits, 10 ways to build good marriages, 10, 10, 10 ways to get the life partner that you want, etc, etc, etc. Yes, but I want us to have, but, but the question should be not how to break bad habits, not how to build good habits. The question should be with all this information that we have, with all this, you know, Google, you can Google anything that you want, how to do this, how to do that, how to get your breakthrough in 10 days, how to, you know, create the life that you want. But the question is why aren't people doing it? Why aren't people doing that? Why aren't people building good habits? Why aren't people doing these things, yeah, that need to be done to get that good life partner? Why aren't people doing these things that need to be done so that they can quit their addiction, so that they can quit their, you know, their, 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 uh, whatever is stagnating them? Why are people still stagnated when you have all these books, when you have all these, you know, Google documents, when you have all these, um, podcast when you have all these sites that will tell you how to do all these things and i want to suggest to you gentlemen that the answer lies in your focus what have you been feeding are you feeding the distractions or are you feeding the focus i want to suggest to you that the answer lies in changing your mindset by believe by, by changing the belief that you are just you know consequential you just uh, a human being waiting for things to happen waiting for you know things to happen to you but by changing that mindset that to, to to the to the powerful one to the abundant mindset that says i am a spiritual being i am energy i am a creator of the life that i wanted i pray i play an active part in it by changing that language from saying I want to break bad habits to saying, I want to build good habits. Because when you use the positive kind of language, then energy flows towards that. Then attention flows to, towards that. Then focus flows towards that. And when you say, I want to build good habits, your focus and your attention is towards you building those habits. But when you say, I want to break bad habits, what do you do with something that is broken? you always want to mend it. So when, something, when you say you want to break bad habits, then after broken, you'll start to look on how to mend it. 
but what do you do with something that is built? You want to make it better. So I want us to change that language, gentlemen, from a diffusist mindset, from a diffusist language, from a negative language to a positive language that I want to, a positive language pattern that I want to build good habits. Let us change that language from saying, I want to lose, because when you lose something, when you've lost something, what do you do? You look for it, right? You look for it. So you'll still be looking for these weights. And the energy will be channeled towards gaining more weight and attracting more weight towards you. But how about you say, I want to release weight? What is your language? Is it positive or is it negative? We want to have a positive language shift so that we can be able to work on this mission step by step. And I've been there. I've been in different types of addictions before. And I read books that said, we have a hundred ways of doing this, doing that, you know, changing your, the life you want, yada, 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 yada. I've been there before. I've read those books. I've looked, I've, uh, I've, I've looked at different, different podcasts, you know, and tried to win my addiction from that. But what I didn't know was what we want to talk about, which is the missing piece, the focus of the missing piece. That's why you'll you will, you will find somebody who's a great reader, read a lot of books of how to do things, but they're still stagnated because they have not changed the form, they have not changed the language, they have not changed the mindset, they have not changed their focus. They, have not, they are not feeding their focus. They are feeding the distractions. Now, for us to build these great habits, for us to create that life we want, for us to become the people that we want to be, for us to feed that focus, then we have to optimize our daily habits. And as I said, as I said earlier, success is not merely an event, but success is the daily habits that we put in, is the daily discipline that we put in that translates to success at the end of the day. And I want us to look at this as it in our day. I want us to look at that vision that you have. And I want us to go step by step and evaluate it in these four stages, the values, uh, the habits, the journaling and the success contract. So the first thing we want to look at is the values, your core values. You see, the, important of, the importance of values or our core values, uh, gentlemen, is that it leads us. It is the principle that guides our daily lives. It gives us direction and determines our success because it is in our core. It is within us. It is us, actually. So the question I want to you, even as you are setting up that vision, even if you want to work on that vision, what are your values? Because without values, you don't have direction. Without values, you don't have directions. And when you don't have direction, gentlemen, you can go anywhere. You can, you know, be distracted anytime because there's no, you, you can't be well focused, you can be distracted anytime because you don't have a clear direction that you're working towards because your values have a lot to do with your direction. If you say you are kind, if you say you are honest, if you say you are a man of integrity, if you say you are a man of character, if you say you are authentic, what are your four core values? So when something comes within your day and you have a decision to make, for example, you get a very great deal and you're saying, I'm a man of integrity. This great deal, which um, you know, will give you a lot of money. And you know, what you're doing in life is looking for how to stay afloat, for how to grow. And you're saying, this deal is gonna make me rich. And you have a decision to make, it is a tough decision. The best way to make that decision, what will guide you is those values by asking yourself, 
One of my values is honesty. Is this an honest deal? Take. One of my values is I'm a man of integrity. Is there integrity in this deal? Take. Um, one of my values is authenticity. Is this authentic? Take. One of my values is um, honesty. Is this honest? Or one of my values is kindness. Am I kind? Have I acted in a kind way by taking this deal? If it tick those boxes in terms of your values, then that is a thing to do. Our values, ladies and gentlemen, makes it easy for us to make decisions even in toughest of times and give us the direction and the focus on where we want to go. So it is very important to have four principal core values which are uncompromised that you know when this is compromised then we cannot go on with this deal we cannot go on with this relationship we, can, we cannot go on with this um with this business because even in our businesses our energy is felt by how we set our core values our core values determines the energy that we give the vibrations that we have the the the, the frequency on which we vibrate at and if you don't have values even in your businesses values in your family values in your circles of influence then it cannot work you can't build a great brand without great brand value and if you want to help with that on how to optimize your daily habits on how to optimize your values on how to you know to 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 to, to create those values to create that vision yeah because i've seen someone has asked how they can get in touch with me uh you can you, you uh, i'm in the whatsapp i'm in the whatsapp group you can always get in touch with me there yeah and you can um always you know um call if you can so that is my number 0722 32 44 95 and I'll type my mail there, Gukau at maishahab.co.ke. You can drop me a mail. Yeah, Guk at maishahab, sorry. I've uh, at maishahab.co.ke. Uh, Good. So as you continue, fragmenting the second step to optimize in your day is fragment the vision to daily habits. As I said earlier, that success is not an event. And I love repeating this on and on again. Success is not an event, but, it, but, but uh, success is the daily habits that you put in, the discipline that you put in, and the focus that you give it. And at the end of it, what you see is what people call success, but success starts from day one. And the way the mind is formed, the science and the functioning of the mind, and this is why I love talking about chunking, I love talking about fragmentation of your vision to small bits, to actionable goals, to actionable, you know, assignments during the day, to actionable schedules, is because the way your mind is formed, the way your mind operates, it operates and it is set to, you know, to tell you stories or to resist change. Yeah, because the only person, believe me, you, we all don't know, nobody loves change because change disrupts us, change makes us uncomfortable. And the only one who loves change is a wet baby. The only ones who love being changed when you change their diapers. And I look at my, 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 my son, he's um, seven months young. And how happy he is when we just change his diapers, when we just, you know, set him free, when he's, you know, um, uh, filled his pampas and you set him free. He feels relieved, he feels happy and jumpy, and he just wants to stay like that. And I wonder and wow to myself, wow, it's only babies. Babies love change. I wish we could all love change as babies do. However, how, however much it makes us uncomfortable. 
Now the brain is optimized that way. The brain works that way. That when you bring in change, be it a good change, be it a bad change, it wants to resist. And therefore you find yourself listening to limiting beliefs that you've been holding in your mind or your mind telling you that this is impossible or your mind looking at it as fear. You know, fear creeping in when you want to, 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 to sign that big deal, there are doubts, there is fear because your mind is trying to call you back to the limiting story that no, you can't do this. This is too big for you. For example, you want to vie for presidency of your country. You know, you can do it, but your brain tells you, young man, in this country, you only vote for old men. We don't vote for young people, so don't even dare do that. Young man, you need money to do this, so don't even dare do that. Because that is the beliefs that your mind is calling you back to, that your brain is calling you back to fear. Fear of starting out, fear of doing it, fear of getting it done, fear of going out, putting yourself out there for critique. But you see, the mind understands things in bits. So that there's power in fragmenting your goal. There's power in fragmenting that vision to actionable steps because that the mind can take. This is a small step. But when you make it so big, the mind shuts, the mind presents to you fear. I don't know if you're understanding me. Now, make clear your definition of done. I call it DOD. For you to fragment this vision, it needs to have clarity. And we've talked about a microscope. Um, uh, uh, a microscope. Make the definition of done. What is your envisioning? At the end of five years, at the end of 36 months, what do you want to see? What is the definition of done? Make, create even the picture of it, draw a picture of it. I want to live in a house that is white. It has two, it, it, it is a story building. It is, has a black gate. It has this, this and that. Make it very clear, your definition of done. Then break it down, your comprehensive, break down the comprehensive vision into daily habits. Things that you can do daily to bring you closer to that goal every day. So the first thing is having that long-term goal. Maybe it could be a 10-year goal. Break it down to mid-term goals, to short-term goals, and to long-term goals. Long-term goals, of course, is the 10-year vision. Mid-term goals, you can break it down maybe to three years. In three years' time or in five years' time, I want to have done this. Then the five-year vision, break it down to you know short-term vision by breaking down the short-term vision to actionable points, the things that you can start with. And this, I want you to do this in a validated way. There's something, if you can find time, go Google about it, learn more about it called validated learning. Validated learning is a way of breaking down or putting actionable steps in a measurable way. So uh, for example, if my goal is to release weight, if my goal is to be fit, yes? then my actionable steps will not be to work out. Work out is just a blanket statement. I will work out. No, the validated learning is saying, I will do, in order for me to be fit, I will do 10 press-ups every morning, or I will do 20 press-ups every morning, and I will skip 300 reps every evening. So the beauty of this, Putting it in a measurable way is that in the evening, when you are doing a reflective thinking, you look at it and say, did I do the action that I'm supposed to do today to bring me closer to my goal? Yes. Did I do 10 press-ups? Were they really 10? How many did I do? I did nine. So what do I do, need to do more? I need to do one more to get to the 10. Did I do the nine press-ups? No, I didn't. So I'm far up from my goal because today I didn't do 10 press-ups. Did I skip the 300 reps this evening? Did I do 50 push-ups? Did I do yada, yada, yada? Yeah? So if I didn't skip the 300 reps in the evening, even if I did the 50 push-ups or the 10 in the morning, then I've not tick, I, I, I cannot put a tick to my daily habits. I cannot put a tick to you know, things that I was supposed to do during that day. So the beauty of this, you can measure. I want you to break down that goal into actionable habits in a validated way that can be measured and you know, that can bring you closer to your goal. 
The next thing that I want us to look at is routine journaling. The beauty about journaling, gentlemen, it, it keeps log of all the intuition and ideas from daily interaction. Maybe you interacted with people in your circle and there's this great idea came to you and you've done it in your journal and it, you, you see that this is um, something that can help you make your vision better, can help you make your goals better, can help you achieve your visions you know, better. Like from, if you're learning something from uh, this, 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 this session you're having today, then you can do it in your journal and you can go and transfer it like, you know, I learned something new from um, coaching books and I want to, in, to, to put it in my, you know, in my vision or in my actionable steps. So the beauty of jungling is that it helps you keep on track and it also helps you look at your day, look if you, if, if you lived your values during that day or there's somewhere where you fall short, it helps you see if you met your expectations in terms of your fragmented vision, then when you go to do your re reflective thinking in the evening, then you are able to say, wow, I am closer to my goal, or this is what I can add, or this is what I can get. Then success contract is the last thing that you should optimize in your daily habits. And this should be done when you are creating that vision. After creating that vision, you need, after saying this is my 10 year vision, you need to do a success contract. And this worked magic for my clients. It has worked magic for people around me because they, can, they are able to see it. And, you know, by drafting a success contract is another way to say, I'm calling you out to act on your faith. Because faith is the substance of things not, of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. While you are not able to see the success, your 10 year success from today, but you are able to sign that contract and hold yourself accountable. Okay? So I want you, when you are forming that vision with the three components, you have already made the definition of done clear that when all this is done, I want this to be to look like this. Write down a success contract. And if you want help with that, of course, you can again reach out. I normally have accountability classes. I normally have my, uh, mastermind groups where we just hold each other accountable, you know, sit, have one hour of coaching every week, and you know, get to learn, of course, at an investment again. So, um, success contract. You create a contract that is written, I, Nguka, or Juan, on this date, you write the date there. Um, uh, I've, 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 on this day, I've said to do this, this, and this, and I'm holding myself accountable to this great vision. Then you sign below it. You sign, no, you, you, you sign below it that you are holding yourself accountable to that 10 year goal. So you sign a success contract with yourself and sign it. And the beauty about it is that you hang it where you can see it daily. And I suggest you hang it in your door. If you have a private room, you can use your room and hang it on the, on, be, you hang it behind your door or you can keep it on your phone. You can keep it where you can see it daily. You can put it on your calendar. You can put it on your uh, computer's uh, uh, desktop. You can put it on your phone's wallpaper. So long as you can, you, you are able to see that success contract every day as you go out to grind, as you go out to, you know, work then you have it in mind that I am working towards a vision. I am working towards a specific direction. And lastly, gentlemen, focus. These are some of the things that we can do to increase our focus. These are some things that we can do to improve our focus because where focus go, energy flows. And these are some of the things that we can do have ability. And this is my an accountability matrix that I would like to suggest to us. Um, and I want you to look at it in two ways that, you know, you are responsible. And this I said when I was talking about you being a creator. When you understand that you're not merely having it happen to you, having experiences, but you are a creator of these experiences, then you also own 100% of your actions as well as your failure. Because the final outcome is equal to the 100% of your actions. 
meaning if these actions are yours, then you have to own both the negative ones and the positive ones, both your failures and your successes, you need to own them. So personal accountability is a continuous commitment to self, to yourself, by choosing oneself over and over again. In a way, this is saying by choosing to focus on that vision, by choosing to focus on those goals, by choosing to focus on your life over and over again, and giving yourself the best of, uh, you know, the part of your uh, energy budget. So taking responsibility of your actions and holding yourself accountable for both the positive and the negative. So in the personal accountability matrix, I invite you and I suggest you to have reflective thinking every day and have a thinking space. So create a session for self-reflection at the end of the day. From your journal, you can look at it and at the end of the day and get a thinking venue. For me, it is my balcony. You can get to your balcony, you can get to your thinking chair, you can get to your prayer room, you can get wherever you want to think from. Do a reflective thinking of the day because it opens up your brain to more possibility. Then do validated evaluation. Carry out an evidence-based, apart from doing validated learning, I invite you also to do validated evaluation where you carry out an evidence-based evaluation of your daily actions to see if they are key to bringing you closer to your goals and your vision. Then do intentional accountability. And even if this, as I've said, we normally have mastermind groups where we just come to grow and uh, glow together you know, just have um, coaching sessions once a week, one hour, and we do it with online. So even people from different countries can plug in, don't need to be here physically in Kenya, but we do it virtually as the new normal has taught us, which is a good space to just grow and have accountability. Again, you can reach out and ask more about that if you are interested in that. Then we have inten intentional accountability, which I've talked about. Choose to intentionally become accountable for your actions and seek for honest feedback from accountable, uh, your accountability partners, which is really important for you to have. People who will hold your back, people who will watch your back, people who will be there for you, and people who have all good intentions about your growth. To your success, gentlemen, always remember to celebrate. Celebrate the small wins as well as the big wins, because life doesn't have to be all serious, but you have to be happy and celebrate your small and your little wins. So what next? Focus on God. If you, get, if you forget everything that you've learned today, remember, these are just suggestions to improve your focus. First, focus on God, the author and the finisher of your faith. And we saw in our, in our correlations that faith is equal to work. Because when you faith it, you faith it until you make it. It means that you're working towards it. And faith is just an imagination. It begins with an imagination, okay? Then it comes to a belief that you hold. You, you start by imagining, you believe, and you get it done by channeling the right energy towards it. And as you said earlier, it is a preview of life's coming attractions. In short, your imagination, it is the greatest of your realities. So if you want to create that thing, Focus on God, because our God, again, ladies and gentlemen, is a jealous God. And when you focus on any other thing, on that, be it on that vision, be it on that goal, without focusing, without, you know, tagging God along, then God will see that. God sees that as, a, as an idol, anything that you put before your God, with that vision, anything that you choose to focus more on than focusing on God, the authentication of your faith, of your work, of your goals, of your vision, of your craft is an idol. That is Hebrew and verse two. So choose to focus on God. You see, as the chair that I'm sitting on, as a consumer, as the person who bought it to sit on it, for me, it is done if I can sit on it. But from when I go to the creator or the innovator of it, they'll say it is only finished when they have their brand behind it. For example, for the plastic Ken Poly chairs in Kenya, all of them need to have that logo, Ken Poly, or made in China, or you know, made in uh, Japan, made in Europe. For an LG TV, for me, if it works, you know, it works well, but for the manufacturer, if it is not written LG on it, it is not 
complete. Same thing to God. While you can look at your life as complete, you need to go back to your maker so that you can get to know how can I function best? What is the envisionment for me? Then create that life based on, you know, just uh, connecting with the spiritual being as a spiritual being connected to the spirit, the, 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 the supernatural being who, is, who to me is God. I don't know what to you is and get to know how to create that life that you want instead of personalizing it and making an, an, an idol at the end of the day. The next thing is meditation. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, uh, you know, let not these words depart from your mouth, but meditate on them day and night. So you can meditate. Meditate through the word of God. Meditate through um, life skills that you've learned through the day. Sit down with this information. Just meditate on it. Sit down with your vision. Meditate on it. Pray about it. Talk about it. Because something, about, something cool about meditation in science is that um, meditation releases the productive hormones or the feel-good hormones of romance, uh, the... Um, the oxytocin and the vasopressin in the brain that is released when you are meditating and you are able to think clear and you are able to have you know this feel good environment this energy for the next day that's the beauty about meditation exercise exercise a little bit more often you could work out you could take a walk you could jog you could do bike rides you could do hike I've realized in my coaching in my counseling I do it in a little bit different way. I can decide to meet with a client, do coffee. I can decide to go with a client. Um, uh, there's a client, there's a client. I once went with a client for a bike ride and we just had a session, just a, a bike ride and we were able to, you know, to, 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 to get a lot of clarity from that session that you, that, that you were able to get the ones that you are just did in a quiet and close space. And this, I came to realize this when I, looked at the dynamics of how our brain works and what energy triggers. It triggers endorphins, which improves prioritizing function of our brain. So how about exercise a little bit more? And if in, even as you exercise, you can be listening to a book, you know, audio books, you can be listening to music, even you exercise, or you can be thinking about that vision and you know, it can make you get more clarity and you know, improve the prioritizing uh, functions of your brain and when you improve when you're prioritizing then you focus more and when you focus more energy flows to your focus and when energy flows to your focus you create the life that you want they are all connected music you all know the power of music music you know um triggers the release of dopamine which expands our cognitive ranges and hence focus you can listen to music music Good music, of course, music that speaks to the heart, to the soul. Music that is sweet to the ear and sweet to the heart as well and sweet to the soul as well. So um, I'll invite Tony to just um, play something for us. And if you can join in and sing this beautiful song called Clear the Stage by Nedam. Um, we can think around it even as we choose to create this vision, but most importantly, focus on God so that we don't let this big vision, we don't let this big life, we don't let these big goals, we don't let this big focus become an idol before our God. Um, Tony, are you still in the meeting? Maybe you can play for us that. Um, then after that, we just take it back to Tony, who will help us maybe say a prayer, and they bring the meeting to a close. So, Tony or TD? All right. Um, no. I hope Tony. Uh, yeah, let me. I don't know because I've been sending him a message. I don't know if he's here. I hope he'll play. Sorry. So um, if I want to play it, how can I do that? Share the screen again. Uh, only Tony can do the 
Tony, are you here? Mr. Tony, okay, maybe Tapelo, can you say something? Uh, Mr. Sean wanted to say something here. He has his entrance. You can unmute yourself and say something while you're waiting for Tony. So thank you, guys. Um, I'll find a way to play that uh, song. So let uh, who who's speaking? Tapelo or somebody? Uh, my my phone is my phone is it's something else. I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> hey, I'm shocked. I didn't see that. Um, <laughs> I'm okay. sorry, but but what I what I can just say is that you know this was a well prepared presentation. Eh? It was it was it was um it was excellent. You know, in, in the military we say. Uh, the SD of the gentleman who was who was presenting it's it's very it's very uh, immaculate you know he's, he's a very good staff officer he can present uh, missions and people would understand on how to 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 launch an attack we learned a lot say, and I'm very very elated to say. Uh, we will keep on. We have learned on how to make good presentations. You know, you, 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 you. I, I believe that these guys they've they've seen that when you prepare for something, you, you, you put in your mind, your spirit, and your soul in that thing, so that you come up with the spirit of excellence. That's what God requires. You know, God is amused by excellence. He's moved by excellence. He's moved by diligence. So I believe that we will do that. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. So that's the song. Uh, is the audio audible for the song? No, sir. There's no volume. There's no volume. I, I, don't know. I don't know how to do that, so I'll just stop the presentation. But um, I'll share the. Uh, TD can share the the what? TD can share the link for that YouTube uh, song and just listen to it. It has a lot in it on terms of um, what in our lives, the focus that we give in our lives that tends or comes to be, or tends to be an idol for us. When we think we're on the right path, there are ways that can seem right to, you know, to man, but to God, it is just action and fatality. So maybe you can just share that link and people can just listen to it and get blessed with it. Thank you guys again. And thank you for the great feedback. I'm super excited and yeah, it was really a great honor to, to present. It was really a great honor to present and um, to just join in this conversation with us. And yeah, thank you. Back to you, to Teddy. All right, thank you so much, uh, brother. That was so super charging. It was uh, an exciting moment, uh, and uh, just that uh, we are not time is not on our side. We would be going on and on, and even have questions. But thank you so much for the presentation, my brother.
May the Lord richly bless you. And um, I would like to ask, I don't know if Dr. Uturil is here. Uh, maybe he could just uh, close for us in, in, a, in a prayer. Hey, we have but, to uh, ask thank questions. you so much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah that maybe before prayer i don't know if there's anyone who has a question uh, but we we were requesting we had long request that you should type them in the chat and uh only taolo shared something about a vision earlier on uh, as the speaker had asked us to but if any of you here has a question, please kindly show by raising your hand and then we'll give you the stage. Yes. Uh, the president. Please ask your question. And Can you guys hear me now? Yes. We should. Yeah, we can. All right. Awesome, guys. Um, Coach, uh, is it Nguka? I hope I'm pronouncing it very well. <laughs> you are amazing, my brother. You, you just really went all out in pre pre preparing for this amazing piece. I think for me, what really came